What's up, guys? Tyler Boy underscore 722 here with a top 10 rosters in NCAA 25 video. This is my projection and a prediction. So make sure you know this is not official or anything, but this is my projection and prediction. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let's kick it off with the first. Well, just missing out, we have Penn State, Texas A&M, Missouri, Oklahoma, and even Colorado. Maybe you can also throw in Utah here and USC. But, yeah, I don't think they're going to put Texas A&M in there, even though Texas A&M does have a top 10 overall roster. Unfortunately for people, you got to look at the recruiting rankings as well. Same with Penn State, but I think Penn State's wide receiving core is going to hurt them there. Colorado, look, listen, they're going to have two top five players. I know it's going to upset people, but it's just the truth. Luther Burden for Missouri. Uh, but, yeah, and then you got Oklahoma that I don't think Oklahoma is going to be in that top ten. So let's get it over to number ten. We're going to go for Ole Miss at number ten, bringing back Jackson Dart, who's going to be in the 90s. Wide receiver Trey Harris. He's going to have one of the highest, I think, catch in traffic overall. Slot wide receiver Jordan Watkins, Ulysses Bentley. The offense is going to be so much fun. I only had them at a 94. I think we could potentially see him a little bit higher. But losing Judkins there kind of drops you down. But defensively, too, Jared Ivey, they just stole Walter Nolan from AM. That's a huge get. One of the best defensive tackles, probably even being the best defensive tackle slash nose tackle um in the entire game john saunders jr at db they just got some more transfers as well Ole miss is going to be a real good fun team to use one of the best i think overall to use especially if you're going to be playing online head to head number nine though lsu the tigers coming in as 93 overall 95 offense just one more above Ole miss and then 88 defense offensively garrett the nuss bus nuss meyer here as I think he's going to be in the mid to maybe even high 80s. I know he hasn't had much production, but he has a lot of talent around him. Wide receivers, Aaron Anderson, Xavion Thomas from Mississippi State. That's a big get there. Chris Hilton, Hilton and, of course, Kyron Lacey, and the big one, Will Campbell. The two best players, I think, on this team are Will Campbell and Harold Perkins. Those two are going to be, t at, at worst, top 12 players overall, in my opinion. The defense is going to be interesting, but they do recruit really well defensively. They got to get into this top 10. Number eight, the Michigan Wolverines, the national champions winners from last year. And we've already seen their overall. Now, it is unofficial, but they were 93 overall, 92 offense, 92 defense. Listen, this was one of the best defensive, in fact, the best defensive team from last year. I know they lost quite a bit, but they returned so much talent, including Will Johnson, who's probably going to be the best corner other than Travis Hunter in this game. I'm trying to think of anyone else, but yeah, 92 defense is kind of disrespectful. Offense, it kind of got the benefit of the doubt. I think um, Donovan Edwards is going to be the best rated running back, believe it or not. I know a lot of people are going to be upset because Ollie Gordon, but Donovan Edwards is, is more talented. So but yeah, I think I think their uh, rating at 93 is okay. I would have fixed the defense and offense. I would up the defense, lower the offense, but still number eight. Number seven is Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish should be a top 10 team. I don't really think this is much of a debate here. Offensively, not as good as wide receivers. They did add Bo Collins, who was not really that good at Clemson. Chris Mitchell, an FIU transfer. You do add Riley Leonard, who I think is going to get a really solid overall some good running backs and a decent O-line. Uh, actually, a really good O-line, let's be real here. But adding R.J. Odin to your defense, he's going to be a monster for Notre Dame at the end. Rusher there. Really good DBs. Yeah, overall, this is going to be one of the best defenses in all of college football and even in this game. Moving into number six, and this is where people are going to get upset, including myself. They unofficially had Clemson as a 95 overall, 87 offense, 98, 98 defense crazy to me um now i think they're going to change this a little bit but i don't see them changing it much i mean they're going to give Dabo sweeney and clemson a lot of the benefit of the doubt and in some ways i don't really understand now, offensively clemson being an 87 that might be one or two overalls too high in my opinion Cade klubnik overall his awareness should not be higher than 70 
if we're being real here, wide receiver Tyler Brown was a was a bright spot. So was Antonio Williams, tight end Jake bringing stool. Obviously, Phil Moffa is probably their best player overall offensively. Offensive line just isn't that good still. Still lack of wide receiver depth. Cade Klubnick still, we just talked about that. Now, defensively, is I'm going to ask you an honest question. Is this a top two defense in college football? No, they're not. Um, now, they have an, an elite Front seven, T.J. Parker, Peter Woods, obviously Barrett Carter, uh, Kobe McLeod, and Wade Woodes. These are real. This this front seven is going to be really, really good. But they lost a lot on their secondary. Nate Wiggins is gone. Uh, they had one transfer to Ohio State, probably their most talented. For being real here, and yeah, I don't I don't think this is going to be a top five defense. They were not a top five defense last year, but man, they were given a lot of benefit of the doubt. And I still believe that they're going to tweak the rankings a little bit. Uh, once again, this is unofficial, but Clemson and Michigan were the two ones that came out in this top 10. And I hope they change Clemson a little bit because this is relatively too high for this team. I don't even think Clemson's going to be a top 10 team this upcoming year. Now, number five, we have the Oregon Ducks. There's a lot of people that think Oregon's going to be in that top three to maybe even pushing towards number two. I don't necessarily think so. Dan Lanning, though, is improving every year. This roster is getting better and better. They just added Evan Stewart and Dylan Gabriel. I mean, that one-two punch is going to be insane. Might even be the best in the Big Ten. But yeah, Oregon offensively is going to be one of the best teams. And in fact, you know, if you've ever played NCAA 14, which a lot of you have, if you played online, Oregon was an OP team to use. They have that ability to be this year yet again. Number four is going to be Alabama. Um, this is kind of obvious simply because of Nick Saban, but now he's gone, but, but still he built this team. Um, Milrow is going to get a major boost because I, he's, his speed's going to be in the nineties. I mean, I'd hope so. He's probably the fastest and most, most athletic quarterback in all of college football. Uh, that's going to get that boost 97 overall defense. They did lose quite a bit, but it's Alabama. They had the best roster based on per roster rankings and recruits last year and the year before, okay? They're going to be in this top five. If you have any any issues with that, I just don't know what else to tell you. They're going to be a fun team to use in this game. Number three, the Texas Longhorns as 95 overall defense is where I have them projected. Anthony Hill, linebacker, and then we just kind of talked about McCumba, but he's a transfer from Clemson, probably their most talented DB Clemson had, or at least second to Nate Wiggins, but still now he's a Texas Longhorn, a lot more really, really good and solid defensive talent there. They got Ad Bill Norton from Arizona, who used to be a dog, but transferred to Arizona, had a solid year there, uh, and then obviously Quinn Ewers, he's going to be the show, uh, the, the story of this game, I think, as he's one of the cover athletes and i think he's going to be close to a 99 but yeah number three is texas number two this might upset people including you know me being a georgia fan but number two is uga carson beck he's going to be that i think a top five player michael williams as well defensively looking like he could potentially break that top 10 uh, and then you have players like Trevor Etienne, Ra Ra Thomas at wide receiver, Dominant Lovett, who's going to have a really good season. Anthony Edwards, who stepped up a little bit last year. Uh, Kobe Young, the transfer from Miami. Oscar Delp, really good offensive, offensively. We just touched upon the defense a bit. I think this defense is going to be better than what it was last year. And they were still a top 10 defensive team. Michael Williams, Smile Munden, Malachi Starks. I hope he's in the 90s. Dalen uh, Everett, hopefully he steps up a bit. And maybe even Daniel Harris at the left uh, corner or no, cornerback number two. I know Julian Humphrey has been getting a lot of reps there, but yeah, number two is UGA. That means number one has to be the Ohio State Buckeyes coming in at number one. I mean, I'm still kind of shocked how this front four wasn't the be rated the best in college football as it was UGA. I mean, they got Jack Sawyer, Tyleek Williams, Ty Hamilton, and obviously JT there all these guys are going to be in the 90s adding in caleb downs probably the best safety in the game Lan uh, lantham ransom going to be a top i would say top 10 safety overall and then you look at their offense just adding in will howard who i think will be a brisk 86 87 overall that's a deserving ranking there maybe even 88 because of his awareness and mecca and buka could be the best wide receiver in college football carnell tate jeremiah smith 
uh, who's a true freshman. You're looking for a high overall freshman who's going to be in the 80s. It's going to be Jeremiah Smith. And then, oh, by the way, two top five running backs, Trayvon Henderson and Quinshaw Junkins. The reason why I think this is going to be number one is because of the added talent that they got from the transfer portal. If you compare it, the roster top to bottom, it's, it's actually slightly better than Georgia's. Uh, in my opinion, and I'm a UGA fan, so I'm giving Ohio State a lot of credit here. But overall, yeah, I have Ohio State number one. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what else you want to see from me predicting the NCAA 25 new football game coming out in July.